Hi everyone. In this video, you are going to learn about the concept called driving large capacitance loads. Driving large capacitive loads. When we are studying about the CMOS logic circuits, the output of output of a logic circuit needs to be connected to any type of other logic circuit. Okay, so when the output of one logic circuit is connected to the input of other logic circuit, the other logic circuit may have low capacitance or may have higher capacitance. So if it is having high capacitance, then that high capacitance input of the stage 2 is acting as the high capacitance load for the stage 1. Suppose, Suppose consider stage 1, okay, stage 1 and stage 2, we are taking two logic circuits, both are made up of CMOS logics, so stage 1, stage 2, the output of this circuit is connecting as input to the stage 2. Now assume that this stage 2 is having some input capacitance, input impedance, a capacitance. This capacitance is the input capacitance which is higher value, which is high value. Okay. Now, the input capacitance of this particular stage 2 is acting as the load capacitance for this one. It is the load for this one because the one which drives the next stage is acting as the load for the previous stage. Okay, now this CMOS logic circuit must be in a position, must be in a position to drive large capacitive load, large capacitive load. Then our stage 1 should be able to drive in such a large capacitive loads. This is the concept related to this one, large capacitive loads. Okay, so now we are going to design the logic circuits in such a way that the, the circuits must be able to drive other logic circuits which have highest input impedance or input capacitance. Okay, so the problem of driving comparatively large capacitance loads arises when signals must be propagated from on chip to off chip. Okay, this is uh, what I explained here, stage 1 to stage 2. So, when the on chip to off chip, so this type of uh, situation causes this problem. Generally, typical off chip capacitances may be several orders higher than on chip capacitance. Okay, because uh, we are studying a situation like when the situation is taking uh, from on chip to off chip that means off chip capacitance is higher off chip capacitance is higher than on chip capacitance okay so for example if the off chip load off chip load denotes as if off chip load is taken as cl CL that CL is greater than or equal to 10 power 4 times on chip capacitance let it be delta square CG sorry square CG okay so this square CG is nothing but on chip capacitance on chip capacitance Okay, that means the driving large capacitance load situation occurs when on chip to off chip situation arises. Okay, so the situation uh, the capacitance have ha uh, is having a value like uh, CL must be greater than or equal to 10 power 4 times square CG. That means uh, 10 power 4 times the on chip capacitance value that a off chip capacitance value is having. So clearly the capacitances of this order must be driven through low resistances, low resistance, otherwise excessively long delays will occur. Excessively long delays will occur. Now what happens when this type of situation occurs because of this higher capacitance value, it leads to, it leads to 
long delays it leads to long delays due to high capacitance value because delay is equal to resistance into capacitance we know this one delay is equal to the product of resistance and capacitance so when you are taking the multiplication with the high capacitance value delay increases so here the capacitance is more that we cannot reduce the one thing we can reduce is low resistance value so we have to use a circuit with low resistance to drive such type of long uh, large capacitance loads okay so in such cases there are three methods three methods for this large capacitance to drive they are they are first one cascaded inverters as drivers cascaded inverters as drivers and the second one is super buffers super buffers and third one is by cmos drivers by cmos drivers okay so let us see the cascaded inverters as drivers in this video and super buffers by cmos drivers i will cover in the next video so coming to the first one cascaded inverters as drivers so inverters intended to drive large capacitance loads must therefore be present low pull up and pull down resistance i told you already pull up and pull down resistances must be very low such that the product of resistance and capacitance must be low to reduce the delay so that's why we are choosing so first one cascaded inverters as drivers so we are choosing an inverter inverter with low pull up and pull down resistors low pull up and pull down resistors okay so let us consider the uh, inverters in cascade three inverters i am taking in cascade this is the first inverter followed by inverter 2 followed by third inverter here what i am taking is as i am moving forward the width of the transistors increases by a factor of f okay so because the to drive large capacitance of course one problem uh, can be rectified the problem can be rectified with low resistance but low resistance may not decrease the delay that much so that's why in order to accomplish low delays we are using the remedy for this one is we are taking the width of each and every inverter increases by a factor f as we move as we are moving forward so the pull up is having here 4 is to 1 and pull down is having 1 is to 1 here the pull up transistor is having a length to width ratio like 4 is to f and pull down is having 1 is to f and here the 4 is to f square as the pull up transistor l by w and l by w of the pull down transistor is 1 is to f square the output is used to drive large capacitors we are taking it as some cl i told you it is greater than or equal to 10 power 4 times square cg this is what the concept we are expecting here see what i am doing i am taking n number of inverters in cascade each inverter is having a width factor is improved by a factor f here we are taking one here we are taking f here we are taking f square and next if one more one more inverter is there that will be f power 3 so f power 0 f power 1 f power 2 and so on here so the width factor the width 
is increased by a factor by a factor f by a factor f like f power 0 f power 1 f square f cube and so on for n number of inverters in cascade it is f power n f power n okay so now let us see what will be the delay of this one so with large f with large f n decreases but delay per stage but delay per stage increases delay per stage increases so for 4 is to 1 nmos inverters for 4 is to 1 and mass inverters delay per stays delay per stays is equal to f into tau per delta v in f into tau per delta v in therefore the total delay per stays for atmosphere, the total delay, we know the delay calculation already, 4 times uh, in the pull up and 1 time in the pull down. So, 4 plus 1, 5 times. So, total delay for NMOS pair is equal to 5 F tau. 5 is because of 4 plus 1. 4 times in the pull up and 1 time in the pull down. Suppose if 2 NMOS inverters in cascade, 4 plus 1. So, 5 times is that of the normal delay. So, a similar treatment gives the delay per CMOS. Similarly, for CMOS inverter, the delay is equal to 7 F tau. 7 times F tau. So, 7 times F tau is nothing but 5 times in the pull up and 2 times in the pull down. So, 5 plus 2, 7 F tau. That is, that is F, uh, Y is equal to C L by delta C G that is equal to F power N. So, we are taking the ratio between the uh, output and input capacitances. Output load capacitance C L by input capacitance delta uh, square cg that is equal to f power n so that the choice of f and n are independent the choice of f and n are independent so, we now need to determine the value of f which will minimize the overall delay for a given value of f y, given value of y and from the definition of y, so ln of y is equal to ln of f. Suppose if you apply natural logarithm on both sides, this will come. So, n is equal to ln of y by ln of f. So, thus for n even, thus for n to be even, total delay is equal to n by 2 pi f tau, n by 2 pi f tau that is equal to 2.5 times n f total delay is equal to n by 2 5 times f into tau that is equal to 2.5 n f tau this is for n mos suppose if you consider the same for the c mos it will be for c mos delay is equal to 7 by 2 nothing but 3.5 n f tau this is for c mos 
so whatever it is in all cases in all cases we generally write delay is proportional to n times f tau that is equal to ln of y by ln of f into f tau so it can be shown that the total delay is minimized if f assumes the value e if f is equal to e what happens becomes 1 becomes 1 the denominator becomes 1 so that means the base of natural logarithm so that is each stage should be approximately 2.7 times wider than its procedure um, its precedence so this applies to cmos as well as nmos inverters this applies to cmos and as well as nmos inverters okay thus assuming that f is equal to e as i told you we have number of stages n is equal to ln of y n is equal to ln of y okay so overall delay we can calculate td overall delay td n even td is equal to 2.5 times e n tau this is for n mos td is equal to 3.5 e n tau this is for c mos okay suppose n odd that means here n value n is nothing but number of inverters in cascade suppose four number of inverters eight number of inverters 16 number of inverters like that even number odd number means 3 5 7 all these odd numbers such like such number of inverters are in cascade then the delay for nmos inverter td is equal to 2.5 times n minus 1 plus 1 into e tau this is for nmos and td is equal to 2.3.5 uh, 3.5 times n minus 1 plus 1 plus 2 sorry plus 2 into e tau this is for cmos inverters so in this way we can calculate the overall delay for the nmos inverters in cascade with a width factor f has to be increased for each and every stage okay this is about cascaded inverters as drivers and in the next video i will explain about super buffers and bi cmos drivers thank you